Howdy folks. This episode of Burning Daylight is brought to you by Stetson Ranches out of Fromberg, Montana. Stetson Ranches is a multi-generational ranch family, a diversified outfit that focuses on the two things that really make any good uh well any good ranch, horses and cattle. They got some of the best uh, foundation quarter horse bloodlines in their brood mares. They they've got mares from the four sixes, the the King Ranch, and bloodlines going back to Peppy Sand Badger, Doc Bar, Two Eyed Jack, and uh, Zanpar Bar. Just just to name a few. Uh, they're really nice, big, shapy, athletic mares with a great disposition and great mind to them. They're breeding them back to some of the best studs out there. They're, uh, they got a really good, uh, crop of, uh, colts coming up here in the next year from a, uh, a King Ranch stud. Just really, really excellent. I'm just, they're really nice ranch horses and they're ready to go any, any direction you want to take them, whether it be, uh, you know, Western pleasure, cutting, raining, just, or just want to go straight ranch horse with them. They're 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 really really nice, uh, really really nice horses. They've also got a really unique uh, direct to consumer uh, beef program, pasture to plate. It's uh, registered Black Angus cattle, registered Hereford bulls, giving you a, an F one Black Baldy cross, uh, and that. That animal is going to feed out. It's, it's uh, they're going to be fed the highest quality feed. They're going to be taken care of with the highest quality uh, care because these people raise them from from birth all the way to when they're harvested. The only time they leave the ranch is to go to the packer and then come to your door. They're uh, frozen, frozen beef uh, delivered on. Uh, on dry eyes to your door for 125 bucks a month you can join their subscription package it's uh eight to eleven pounds of beef that's hamburger stew meat uh roasts and uh select cuts of steak uh use the promo code move your ass m-o-v-e-y-e-r-a-s-s get 20 percent off your first month uh make sure you go check them out stetsonranches.com for the the horses stetson uh beef.com for the to order any beef and check them out on facebook and instagram Instagram uh, Stetson Beef. Next up, we got the official bootmaker of Burning Daylight, Houston Boot Company. My good buddy Jake, he's actually at the Reno Rodeo right now, uh, featured at the, the Reno Rodeo, which is pretty cool. And uh, he is making some of the best cowboy boots out there, all handmade, uh, bespoke. That's something he uh, he uses in all of his uh, Instagram posts, uh, like the hashtags. He, he uses bespoke. I think that means personalized. I, I know a lot of words, but that one I'm not real for sure of, but I'm going to use it like I know it. So bespoke. Anyways, uh, it's all custom made, all hand measured, handmade, uh, use the highest quality materials. And the guy is a really, really good artist. He just he knows how to make things look really good. And uh, and it'd be the probably the best pair of boots you've ever put on your foot. Uh, I know the ones that I have are. And he's just a great guy. If you're in Reno for the rodeo, go check him out. He's got a booth. Uh, if not, he's up in Virginia City, Nevada. And uh, you can find him on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Instagram is at Houston Boot Co. Or you can get a hold of him in person. Uh, get a hold of him for, you know, any questions or whatnot he can send you a kit but he'd rather measure your foot in person but give him a holler 775-315-3022 and let him know you heard about it on burning daylight and last but not least we've got thunderbird equine now out of sandia park new mexico and now i know where it's at kind of uh in the albuquerque area Anyway, uh, Miss Jessica Pancost will be taking uh, clients from uh, from down there, focusing on vaquero style horsemanship for your horse, your colt, or your mule. Uh, you get tr- practical ranch type experience from a second generation trainer and a third generation rancher. Your horse will gain roping experience, head and heel and breakaway, and ranch roping, or you know any uh, any combination of the above. Uh, if you're bringing a colt. Require a 60 day minimum. Same with uh, horses and mules. Your colts, you can expect uh, a quiet, confident, and respectful colt with all the right tools to move on to any discipline of your choice. Horses and mules uh, that are going to come in for finishing. Uh, 
can be expected to develop a harder stop. Collected frame and precise movements through leg cues, your horse or mule will develop the confidence to do anything you like under saddle, whether that be mounted shooting, rope and trail riding, or cattle work. And at the end of the program, you will receive five free lessons to reacquaint yourself with your new equine partner. Uh, message Thunderbird Equine on Facebook or Instagram or give her a holler 720-205-2996 to book your spot. Uh, thanks to all the sponsors and uh, thank you also to all the the, the folks that um, <laughs> subscribe on Patreon. Uh, <clears throat> we're giving away a, uh, a custom made uh, snaffle bit from Matt Wilson and it is going to be American as all hell. I, I don't know exactly what all is going to go into it, but we're making it just American as can be because uh, Independence Day is coming up and haven't given a haven't done a giveaway yet uh, this month. So that that's what we got. I can't wait to see what he's putting together, but it's going to be really cool. If you'd like to be a part of that, you got to sign up at the five dollar level or higher. Head over to patreon.com slash burning daylight and uh, you can uh, you can get signed up there. We get extra content. Also, uh, there's there, there's a there's a whole bunch of extra perks. So go check it out and uh, let's get into the show. Up in the morning beneath the stars so bright. Pull your hat down, make sure your cinch is tight. Horse is kind of snuffy, cold chill up your spine. It'll get your ass moving some more burning daylight. Howdy there, I'm Matt McKinley, and we're burning daylight. Well, howdy there, Daylight Burners. Happy Friday. Kind of kind of had a little bit of a brain fart this week. Or, uh, I don't know, what, what you want to call it? Writer's block, whatever. Uh, podcaster's block, that sounds stupid. Um, whatever the hell it was. Um, I wanted to do a bull session this week, but I, I could not make up my mind who who to talk to. I wanted to do something a little different, and I just I couldn't come up with anything. And um, yeah, so uh, same uh, kind of the same thing. Tuesday, uh, I was gonna do fence post politics with Aaron. Uh, he had to do something with his dad. So I said, go ahead. I got something else I can record on. And then I got to researching on that and boy, I, uh, there was a lot more, a lot more there than I thought. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, probably, uh, well, you're, you're hearing this on Friday. So me and Aaron will be talking about it tonight. Uh, we'll do our fence post politics tonight. Uh, anyhow, in the meantime, I don't want to leave y'all hanging. I know, uh, you've come, a, become accustomed to, uh, the three day a week, uh, format. So I got to get my ass in gear and get something to you. So anyhow, I'm going to do a continuation on one that I did here a couple weeks ago with, uh, the failed train robberies, the worst train robbery ever. And we're going to tweak that just a little bit, as you can see by the, you know, the graphic there. We're going bank robbery fails. Yeah. Uh. And uh, come to find out, there was not a lot of bank robberies in the Old West. Just, there just weren't that many. And the, like... Hollywood and and uh, the movies have made well they've made a lot of things about the old west that uh you know they they turned um uh, old cowboys into gunfighters which they were not I mean they 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 would have a scrap every now and then and and every now and then somebody would uh would use a gun and sometimes every now and then you'd have a cow hand that was good with a gun but that was not the the norm cow hand was good with a rope uh, good with a horse. That was about it. 
and uh, and and in fact, they were not very good at holding their liquor because they didn't they didn't get it very often. So when they got to town, uh, they spent all their money on booze and women, and so it got real rowdy. But then after that, they were broke and they had to make a living, so they went out and punched cows. Um, but you, you keep hearing about all these bank robberies, and there were there were a few, but. Uh, I, I, I said, I saw some statistic that said, I, I can't remember ex- the exact number, but it was, um, it was on ammo.com and it was an absurdly low amount of, uh, bank robberies in the old West. And I, I did not dig very far into it, but it seemed a little bit low for me, but Hey, they could be right. I don't know. So Anyhow, I, I know that there weren't not near as many as what uh, as what Hollywood would have you believe. And I, I don't even think they're trying to to paint a picture of the Old West. They're just uh, they're going for what's going to be the most compelling story. So bank robbery is pretty compelling. Um, but I, I like uh, I like when uh, you just hear about stupid crimes, uh, crimes that go awry. The you know, the best laid plans of mice and men will surely go uh, astray or go awry. I think that's uh, the quote from, I where, I don't remember where the quote's from exactly, but that's the, you know, the inspiration for the, the title of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And, uh, yeah, and it basically it's just, um, the overall theme is just like you can plan things out to the minute detail and uh, have your all of your bases covered and uh, and everything go to shit in an instant. It's kind of, you know, maybe Mike Tyson put it a little more um, I guess uh, he's a little more rough around the edges wasn't, wasn't quite as eloquent, but he said everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. And, and that's kind of kind of the whole whole thing of uh, of that quote is you know the best laid plan the plans of mice and men will surely go awry and yeah it's kind of like murphy's law whatever can go wrong will go wrong and um hey boy it was uh it's as as true as it is today it was it was just as true in the old west and i've got a couple stories here that i i think you'll kind of enjoy so we're going to head back to 1893 and uh, we're going to go over to Western Colorado, a little town called Delta. Uh, a lot of you folks might be uh, familiar with it, but the McCarty gang consisting of uh, a ri- initially there was like, like seven or eight, something like that. But the ones we're going to deal with here, and this was kind of the tail end of the McCarty gang. They were, they were well known up in the Oregon area, but they'd also, after a successful string of robberies, uh, they'd gain, you know, they, they'd gathered up quite a little bit of cash and they'd use that to buy uh, property in several different places and kind of have safe houses along the route so that they can just, uh, yeah, so they can just go on along and, uh, you know, if they, if they rob a train here, um, you know, say they're three weeks from home, three weeks ride from home. Well, they, they got a place, you know, a couple of days from there that they can rob a train, hide out and then make their, make their way to another house that they got, whatever. And so they had like a little, uh, kind of like the, how the army did it, you know, just, you had a string of, uh, of forts along, along the trail. And that's kind of how they did with their, I'm sure they had their little back roads and, and inlets and outlets and whatever. And they just had a string of properties along the way. Maybe they had a cabin on them, maybe just a cave, whatever it is, but place where they can hide out. And they did pretty well for themselves. They had quite a little bit of property, but, uh, the heat got turned on them up in, in Oregon. And, uh, Two or three members of the original gang gets arrested, but along the way, old Bill McCartney and his uh, uh, McCarty and his son Fred, and then uh, his his brother Bill's brother Tom, they uh, 
they head into Delta, Colorado. They've been kind of scouting out for a little bit. And uh, there's only one bank in, or I guess there was two banks in town. And they, for whatever reason, they chose uh, this farmer's merchant bank. Opens at 10 o'clock in the morning. They stroll in precisely about 10, well, you can't say precisely about. Uh, so let me retract that. They walk in about 10, 15 a.m. That's the, the record time on record and old bill mccarty he's uh he walks in with his his son fred his brother bill's outside uh around back with uh with the three horses bill orders the cashier guy named andrew blackley uh b-l-a-c-h-l-y blotchley blackley something along those lines um uh, nah, 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 nah. not gonna have a head here in a minute anyways um anyway so he is like the the cashier uh, the main teller and his assistant are right there and they uh you know they put a gun on him and they say hey, reach it reach for the sky and uh while bill's covering him uh little freddie he jumps up on the counter and he's trying to reach over the partition and uh and grab some cash. Well, Spook's old uh old Blackley, Andrew Blackley, he gets a little he gets a little jumpy and he kind of squalls and uh makes a makes a movement towards under the desk, thinking maybe they're he's reaching for a gun. Uh so they like, hey, get your hands out where we can see him and you keep it quiet. Well, doesn't say anything about a gun being there. Uh, but that's what it looked like. Uh, but apparently, uh, what they say was, uh, old Blackley was trying to get the attention of a lawyer who rented an office space in the back of the bank. And, um, they, uh, he, he figured that's where these guys, once they get grabbed the cash and the, and the coins, that's where they're headed is uh out that back exit which they were that's where tom was waiting with the three horses and it just so happens that lawyer's uh, office was right along that same route so little banker man he's trying to get the lawyer's attention and uh he he squalls again and uh old freddie he's uh everybody can tell he's kind of on edge he's a little uh he's a little jittery a little trigger happy and he's had enough of old andrew blackley and he just blap blap two shots misses him completely smooth out misses him and then uh then blasts him in the face uh kills him instantly well now the element surprise is i mean it's on him but they've used it and they've used it in a way they really didn't want to. And uh, in the meantime, they can't get the, the safe open because there ain't any time. So they grab the whatever cash and coins they can right there close at hand. And uh, they head out the back door. In the meantime, uh, the lawyer, he hears the shots. He uh, he heads out the back door, runs into Tom, who's trying to tie up the two extra horses to uh, to a place right there handy where they can get them close, and uh, you know, and just grab them real quick and handy and, and get off uh, into the sunset. Well, they gotta they gotta take care of this guys. Well, they don't kill him. They go ahead and point a gun at him, and uh, old Freddie and Bill they come charging out the back door. And, uh, oh, Tom, he sees him come out and, uh, well, he just, he said, all right, he pitches the reins to him and he, he, uh, mounts up his horse and hauls ass. Uh, well then, old Fred, he, he swings up on his horse, but he drops the corn bag. And, uh, so, so he had a bag under his coat where he was stuffing all the, the cash into and and I'm sure it was just like a cloth bag and uh, nothing really keeping it open. So it's kind of one of those things where you need to have somebody holding it open so you can start stuffing cash in there. But so I'm, I'm sure it just he was just stuffing it into his jacket. I uh, bet he also had a bag of coins. Well, he when he's swinging up on that horse, he, he drops a bag of coins. And uh, but he figures they, they still got about 700 bucks worth of cash in there. So he's fuck it. <laughs> 
<coughs> off he goes. <clears throat> well, then old Fred, he's the last one on his horse. And um you know that old saying, you don't you don't have to be the fastest guy around. Uh when a bear's after you, you just gotta be faster than the slowest guy. And um well, that's kind of how it was with Freddie. He might have been the he might not have been the slowest guy on earth, but he was the slowest guy that day. And uh, there just so happened to be a uh appears to be a crack shot uh loyal civic civic duty type of citizen that owned a hardware store across the street and he sees all this going down of course here's the shots and uh he rustles up his uh, his personal personal gun which is an old single shot rifle and he comes wheeling out his store lines him up blam shoots old freddy uh was it freddy no it was bill no no Oh yeah. Uh shoots Bill right in the head. Just just shoots him in the head. And uh and he, he has to reload because it's a single shot, and I'm sure I'm I'm sure it's like a breech loader or something. Probably wasn't probably didn't have to tamp a ball down uh the barrel. Uh prob- probably something a little quicker than that, but not quite uh wasn't the old Henry, you know, eighteen seventy model uh repeater. Um anyway. He draws a beat on old Tommy boy as he's racing off and uh, shoots his horse in the ass, but doesn't drop him. Well, <laughs> along the way, they uh, they scatter a whole bunch of, of cash that they had just stolen along, along the street. Uh, they get out of there. Uh, nobody really uh, hurt worse for the wear outside of the the dude the shot in the face uh but of the 700 dollars that they stole plus all the coins they didn't say how much uh in coins that they stole but <clears throat> probably not a whole lot but they dropped that and then of the 700 bucks uh they ended up with not quite 200 uh the townspeople recovered the rest of it just following them out of town and and picking up loose bills so um, I believe it was like two ninety six seventy or some some shit like that. Was it worth it? Even in those days, uh, I mean, you're looking at what fifteen fifteen hundred bucks, maybe two thousand bucks. Uh, probably not worth a whole lot. And uh, next one we got it's a little more famous than that up in uh, Northfield, Minnesota, 1876. So a little bit, rewind the times just a little bit. And this is a pretty famous one because it's basically the bank robbery that ended the the Frank and Jesse James and uh, the Younger Brothers gang. Basically ended their run uh, robbing banks. Um, mostly because all three of the Younger Brothers were, were captured. But you think of you think of bank robberies and train robberies and and you think of them all robberies and you think of them all kind of old west west of the Mississippi. A lot of them you're thinking west of like Dodge City, Kansas, you know. Uh, but this one was up in Northfield, Minnesota, uh, September seventh, eighteen seventy six, and Minnesota is another that another part of the country that I just don't know a whole lot about. Uh, Minnesota, the Dakotas. I know a little bit about uh, Wisconsin just because of the Green Bay Packers uh, and cheese. Um, Don't know. You don't hear much about Minnesota other than they're polite. And then, of course, this past year you hear about uh, all the riots and shit in Minneapolis. But I don't know much about Minnesota history, uh, but apparently it was a little bit of a wild and woolly uh, area, but it was just, must have just been too goddamn cold for everybody else. So the, they just didn't get a whole lot of attention, but Frank and Jesse James, Cole Younger, all the Younger Brothers, or the, the Younger Brothers gang, they, they ride into Minnesota 
And they start, uh, they kind of split up, start scouting around to see which is going to be the best uh, bank to rob. And uh, they make a list of like seven different banks uh, that they could do. Their number one choice being Mankato. So, September 4th, uh, 1879 or 1876. Doesn't say when they... uh, when they got into Minnesota, but I would imagine anywhere from early to mid August. Uh, but on the 4th of September, they head out right into Mankato and, uh, they're, they're fully prepared to just go ahead and knock off this bank and ride off into the sunset. But for some other, for some reason, whether it be, uh, people recognized them, whatever the hell it was, they, uh, they went ahead and aborted mission and they just, uh, they called it off. Well, they wait three days and they ride on into uh, Northfield. And this was a daylight uh, bank robbery, which pretty uncommon even today. But uh, yeah, it, was, it, it might have been one of the first of its kind uh, at the time. But Frank James, Charlie Pitts, and Bob Younger they head into the bank. And uh, like they've done several times before, they said, hey, we are robbing this here bank and, uh, you know, reach for the sky, open the safe. Let's get a move on. Nobody, you know, nobody move. No, nobody make any uh, sudden movements. Nobody gets hurt. Well, just so happens a fella named J.S. Allen, uh, also hardware store guy, uh, what what is it about guys that own hardware stores? They just want to be a hero. <coughs> but <coughs> he's walking out the bank right as they walk in. Of course, we're at, right when they walk in, you know, they got their bandanas on and shit. But they announce their presence immediately. Like, hey, everybody down. We are robbing this bank. And uh, old J.S. Allen, who just walked out. <laughs> He, uh, he's, uh, on record hollering out, uh, get your gun boys. They're robbing the bank. Well, word travels fast in old Northfield, Minnesota at the time. And I'm, I'm not real sure how big of a town it is, but, uh, Minnesota being kind of on the frontier, I imagine it wasn't more than a, you know, a handful of, uh, just log cabins. I think, but. You got logs up there in in uh, Minnesota, I suppose. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know anything about Minnesota, but I can't imagine this was a real big town. And so, when the hardware store guy says, "Get your guns, they're robbing the bank," well, it wasn't too hard to pretty much uh, recruit the entire town to start shooting back at him. Well. <coughs> It does a number on him. Kills uh, kills two of uh, the gang. Uh, neither one of the, the the James brothers and none of the the youngers, but two of their uh, accomplices get get killed. But in the meantime, they seriously seriously injure all three of the younger brothers, and uh, they make off into the the slop that is uh, Minnesota in September. Uh, apparently, it's just basically a swamp. Um, and it starts up at the time, the biggest manhunt that the, the U.S. has ever seen. Uh, the younger brothers were in such poor shape that they, uh, you know, they just let the, the uh, Frank and Jesse James ride off on their own because they just couldn't keep up. Uh, one of them was, was one of them was shot in the eye. One of them was shot in the jaw. I can't remember where the other one was shot, but they were in bad, bad shape. And uh, eventually, the posse uh, retakes them, and uh, <laughs> and in, in the in the heat of the battle, you know the the hardware guy says, "Hey, they're robbing the bank. Go get your guns." <coughs> well. In the heat of all that, you've got a guy named uh, Alonzo Bunker. Bunker? Booker. Bunker. Alonzo Bunker. He's the like the head cashier, head teller. 
of that bank. They're saying, hey, open up the safe. We're going to we're going to take the money. We'll be on our way. And they're expecting like fifteen thousand bucks in that bank. I don't know where their air intel came from, uh, why they were, uh, you know, expe- uh, expected that. I don't know if that was true, but they they were under the impression that there was fifteen thousand dollars in that bank or in that vault. And when they try to get old Alonzo to open it for him, he said it's on a time lock and it just it can't be opened right now. Uh, while that might have been true, he uh, he just kind of kept stalling them along until uh, till the cavalry arrived, so to speak, in the name of a bunch of pissed off uh, Minnesota townsfolk. Uh, well, they they finally realized they're not going to get into that safe and. Uh, you know the shooting's getting a little more intense outside, so they're they're gonna call it good. So they gather up all the, the loose cash and change that they can find. Uh, they shoot poor Alonzo Bunker right in the head uh, for being uncooperative, and uh, that was Frank James that did that. Just put one right between his eyes because he's like, you know what? Fuck you. Uh, we tried to be nice. All you had to do was open the damn safe. Um, you didn't want to do that, so now you're going to die. And die, he did. Um, they ended up making away with $26.70 worth of coins. And uh, two men dead. Uh, all three younger brothers uh, seriously wounded. Later overtaken by the posse and captured. And uh, effectively breaking the back of the, the James and the younger brothers band. And, um, pretty well the last time they ever robbed a bank. So, um, we went from $300 to 2670. Uh, the final one I got on the list today, I think you'll, you'll like this one too. Uh, these guys are a real piece of work because not only did they start on the other side of the law, uh, being being cops, law enforcement officers, marshals, whatever their particular job title was at the time. Um, but anyway, we'll we'll go back to like the eighteen late eighteen eighties, and we're in southeast Kansas, Coffeeville, which is uh, right on the like the Oklahoma and Missouri borders. Uh, southeast Kansas, kind of hillbilly country. And uh, at the time, uh, when when did Oklahoma become a state? Uh, but uh, either way, still right on the edge of Indian Nation. Um, the Dalton family was a well-known family of just strict by the book, law-abiding folks. Just everything was by the book, and so much so that three of like the six boys from this Dalton family, Frank Emmett and uh, Drat uh, short for Dratton, but we'll call them Drat. Uh, they went into being peace officers, cops, rangers, whatever, you know, whatever their uh, branch that they rode for or, uh, you know, agency that they worked for. Uh, but they were law enforcement officers and, uh, apparently they took their job very seriously, but they took their pay even more seriously. And when they, uh, didn't say how long they went without pay, but they didn't get paid for a little while. And, you know, they said, you know what? I'm out. (laughs) Fuck all of this, but not, not just, uh, fuck this agency that's not paying me. Uh, but also, just fuck being good in general. We're, uh, we didn't get paid before. We're going to get paid now. And so they went to just robbing saloons and gambling houses and, uh, a couple banks here and there. Um, but they also, in the meantime, they recruited a couple different guys. Uh, so three brothers and they had, uh, Dick Broadwell and Bill Powers, and they called themselves the Dalton Gang. And in the meantime, while they're in this low-level uh, petty crime type uh, business, 
They're shooting for the stars, fellas. I mean, they are just going after it. And they know who, uh, you know, this is 1892. The, the Northfield, Minnesota bank robbery was in 1876. So everybody knows about Frank and Jesse James and the, and the Younger Brothers Band. And uh, they're, this Dalton gang here, they, they don't want to be left out of the history books, which luckily, uh, just because of a little podcast called Burning Daylight, they are they're not scrubbed from the history books. People will remember the Dalton gang. And so... They uh, they plan this this gig. It's going to be bigger and better than anybody has ever done, including Frank and Jesse James and the Younger Brothers. They're going to blow all that silly nonsense, all that stupid shit, just blowing it right out of the water. And they're going to do daylight bank robberies, two different banks simultaneously there in Coffeyville, Kansas. And they've got it all planned out. There's five to their gang and they're going to split up. Two of them are going to take uh, one bank and then right across the street is the other bank. The three of them are going to take that. And they, uh, like they went all in. They, they had plans. They, uh, they scoped out the area. They had disguises. The Dalton boys, uh, put on fake beards and mustaches to, to throw off because, uh, they were becoming, uh, to be pretty well known in the area and also just not being known for being good, upstanding individuals at all. So they head into town. And uh, it looks like everything's heading according to plan. It doesn't say how they were split up uh, when when they left their ways. But, you know, one bank's on one side of the street. The other bank's right across the street. So they split up three and two. Problem was, a couple of the town folks recognized them, even with their stupid beards. They uh, They glued onto their face. And I really wonder what they used for a fake beard back in 1892. You gotta believe they're probably using pubes. That would be my guess. Um, unless they shaved a dead man's face and, and took his, uh, took the hair off his chinny chin chin, maybe, but I'm guessing pubes. Uh, anyhow, that's neither here nor there. They had fake beards on, but they weren't good enough. And, you know, it's 2021 right now. And I can typically spot a guy who's wearing a hairpiece. For whatever reason, the hairpiece game has not really kept up with the times. Um, I don't know why guys that want to pay don't go to like the the wardrobe people in, uh, in L.A., in Hollywood because they could probably make you look way better than any doctor or uh, you know registered to pay salesman or whatever the fuck they are um, anyhow we haven't done a very good job with the two pays in 2021 I can't imagine what a fake beard looked like in 1892 uh, but obviously it didn't work because uh a couple of the townspeople noticed them and they started to spread the word, be ready uh, to take these guys on. And well, the five members of the Dalton gang, they uh, split up. They head into their respective banks to go ahead and do their duty. And in the meantime, the whole town of Coffeeville piles outside, armed to the teeth and ready, ready for a fight. And wouldn't you know it, as the five of them came out of these different banks, the whole town unleashed hell. Killed four of them. Oh, Emmett Dalton, he survived. Um, even after being shot 23 times. And remember, this is 1892. Um guns did not shoot particularly fast back then. 
in 1892. And this dude was shot 23 times. Uh, but he survived all of those gun injuries and still got sent to uh, probably a state pen. Um, spent 14 years in there and then lived out the rest of his life. But for a brief moment, him and his two brothers and a couple of their buddies, they were just about to pull off the heist of all heists. And when you think about their plan and their capabilities, the the size of the gang, all of that, and you would think, I mean, but granted, you know, it's it's 1892. Uh there was the five of them, three brothers and two other guys that made up their gang. And outside of the people they robbed, I'm guessing they didn't run into a whole lot of other people and particularly not people that they could run these ideas by. Um, Because any sane, rational, normal person would have said, Hey, your idea is not feasible whatsoever. There's five of you and you're going to go walk in the middle of the afternoon, broad daylight, split up from five people to two people on one side and three people on the other and go rob two different banks at the same time without being recognized with your shitty pube hair fake beard uh, because you've robbed enough stuff in the area that people kind of have a feeling for who you are and they just go on and try it anyways they fail miserably and four of them die and the, uh, the, th- the fifth one gets shot 23 times and and spends 14 years in prison. Maybe you should have had a little more contact with the outside world and uh, access to somebody who would have told you a stupid idea when they heard it because that was one of the stupider ones. And, And it apparently all stemmed from the fact that they wanted to outdo... Frank and Jesse James, even though it had been coming up to 20 years since those two had robbed a train. Absolutely brilliant. Might, might be the best plan I've ever heard in my life. Bravo to the Dalton gang. Bravo to Frank and Jesse James. And uh, bravo to... The McCarty gang. Uh, Yeah, honestly, that's all it probably would have took is like somebody that was not in their gang telling them like, hey, your idea is stupid and you're probably going to die if you try it. Um, I don't know if they had anybody uh, that they trusted that much, but man, looking back in hindsight, you you know they wish they would have had something. Uh, but that's how it goes. That's how it's always been. Um, uh, train robberies were a thing because the railroad was a thing. Um, now it's moved on to, uh, you know, cyber hacking or cyber, uh, uh, information warfare. Um, and that's the thing because, uh, yeah, all of our shit's online. So there's probably a bunch of bumbling stumbling bill mccarty fred mccarty or uh you know frank and jesse james maybe somebody who's a little more uh polished of a hacker or you just got the dalton gang uh guys that got screwed over doing the right thing so they just went hard in the other direction and um and in the end they're all a bunch of bumbling idiots but that's what criminals have always been um 
Now, granted, they've got more sophisticated. Just look at the U.S. House and Senate. Uh, but crooks have always been there. They will, they will always be there. And idiots uh, are no different. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, worst bank robberies ever. And uh, make sure you go get signed up for the the bit drawing. We're going to do that on the 4th of July. As long as you're signed up before then, uh, patreon.com slash burning daylight. Uh, sign up at the $5 level or more. You'll be entered to win or for a chance to win a uh, custom snaffle bit from Matt Wilson. It's going to be a murka as fuck. Going to be awesome. He's already got one concho down and it looks great. So... Um, can't wait to see how the, the finished product turns out and I'm a little bit jealous to be giving it away, but that's how it goes. Uh, I said I'd do it. So now I got to do it. Anyhow, that's all I got for you today. So, uh, don't let your butt crack and move your ass. Keep burning, bro.